Whether you're a full-time student or you're taking an occasional class, being a good business owner means you're constantly growing, constantly learning, constantly investing in your education. But I know that education can get expensive. That is why I wanna give you the top deductions available so that you can take advantage of those educational expenses. But before we jump in, I want you to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any game-changing information. And if you stay to the end, I am going to give you my number one strategy, so making sure that you can deduct your kid's education. Now, let's get after it. The first educational type of deduction that I want to tell you about is an actual tax credit. Now remember, tax credits are those things that reduce your tax liability. A credit is like having income tax paid into the system. So it's important to understand that you really want to go after tax credits. There is the American Opportunity Tax Credit, or AOTC. This credit is specifically designed for students that are in their undergraduate period. And it really does offer you substantial assistance over that four year period, allowing you to take a credit of up to $2,500. And of that $2,500, 40% can be refundable. So if you get a credit of say 2,500 and you already wiped out your income tax, that means that you could get $1,000 back in your pocket. Tax credits offset income tax. So when you are filing your income tax return and say your overall tax liability is say $5,000, right? And then you have maybe withheld out of your paycheck $3,000, now you owe $2,000. A tax credit goes against the $2,000, meaning it can wipe it out. So if you have a $2,500 tax credit, it can wipe out the remainder of that $2,000 and you could get some actually refunded back into your pocket. That is why I love refundable tax credits and the American Opportunity Tax Credit is refundable. The second credit I want to tell you about is the Lifetime Learning Credit, the LLC credit. This is literally a tax credit that benefits students that are pursuing higher education beyond their graduate courses. It has no limit on the number of years it can be claimed. That's right, no limit on the number of years. I want you guys to hear that because you can take that credit every single year. So just think about this. As a business owner, you're probably thinking, Carla, I'm gonna write off my educational expenses anyway. Are you? Or is it better to take a tax credit? All right, you got a point. Because remember, deductions lower income, but credits lower tax. And you can reduce your tax liability down to zero and potentially get a refund. But just like anything else, you got to make sure that your income level is correct. You got to make sure that you're really planning for these tax credits. Number three, student loan interest deduction. If you have student loans, you want to make sure that you're getting that interest deducted and you can deduct up to 2,500 and qualified student loan interest. A lot of people are really experiencing a financial burden because they have these ongoing student loans. Well, if you at least are paying the interest, get a tax deduction on the amount of interest that you are paying. And I want to make sure that you're thinking about how to do this strategically. How do I deduct my student loan interest? How do I take advantage of the tax credits? And how do I do it by making sure that I am going to benefit and keep my income low? So it's important if you find yourself in this situation that you're really thinking it through and not just assuming mm. that you're going to be able to benefit from it. The fourth type of deduction is tuition and fees deduction. This is another way to offset educational costs and it allows you to deduct up to $4,000 
and qualified tuition and fees from your taxable income. And this deduction is available whether you're in junior college, whether you're trying to get a four year, or whether you're trying to get a master's or even a PhD. The tuition and fees deduction credit can be claimed even if you do not itemize because it's a deduction that's above the line. And by that, I mean, you don't have to itemize deductions writing off a house and all of that. Maybe you're taking a standard deduction. You still want to get your tax and fees deduction in that equation. Many of us do not think like that if we're taking a standard deduction. We might just be thinking, well, I can't itemize deductions, so why would I get an educational deduction? That's why you gotta realize that educational expenses are in a separate category than normal deductions. You wanna carve that out. And you really wanna do it in the proper sequence. I'm all about the proper order. I'm all about not putting literally the cart before the horse. Because when you do that, you end up paying a higher tax bill. When you are thinking about education, you want to look at the educational credits. You literally want to look at the American Opportunity Tax Credit. You really want to look at the LLC credit. You really want to look at the tuition and fees deduction, which is not even a credit. You want to look at all of those things so that you can strategically structure it so that you can benefit from maybe one or two of them and really get yourself in the best position. And business owners, stop automatically assuming you're gonna take your educational deductions through your business. Maybe they need to move out of your business, be paid by you personally so that you could get a tax credit for them versus paying them through your business and only get a deduction for them because credits are worth more than deductions. When you are thinking about your educational expenses, you want to know what qualifies as educational expenses. Things that qualify for educational expenses are the tuition, are the fees, but what about the parking if you have to be on campus? What about the internet connection if you're doing your education online? You want to deduct your book. You want to deduct your supplies. If you need to have a laptop because you have to utilize your laptop to log in online to do your homework, all of those things become educational expenses. Don't just think of educational expenses being the actual amount that you pay to the university. You got to think about all the things that are necessary for you to get the education, right? Having put four sons through college and having gone myself, I know that there are other expenses that are associated. There are tutors, there are books, there are laptops, and then there's the second laptop when they break the first laptop. There's the calculators. There's all of these things that you need to have. So making sure you understand what educational expenses are, are going to get you more in credits, more in deductions, so that you could keep more of your cash in your pocket. You are looking to get your kids education deducted. It could be private school education. It could be college education. My number one strategy for doing that is put your kids on payroll. You might not be able to deduct their educational expenses. But if you give them a job to do and you pay them for doing that job, you can deduct their wages and then they can take that money and they can pay for their own education. There's more than one way to do something. You just always got to be thinking strategically. As I always say, when you know better, you got to do better. You got to like you got to comment and you got to subscribe. Why? Because your money depends on it. And I want to make sure you keep all of your money in your pocket.